purchasing director for an industrial parts factory is investigating the possibility of purchasing a new type of milling machine. Ah, this is one of the. She determines that the new machine will be purchased if there is evidence that the parts produced have a higher mean breaking strength than those from the old machine. So the fact that there's higher is in here means right away we have a directional problem, which is slightly more complicated than the next, next the non-directional because we have to worry about to put the greater than here or less than there. But that's right, I don't really mean to do, you, give you a more advanced example, but it's what it turns out to be. Um, if, the, if it's higher than the, than the average of the old machine, a sample of 100 parts are taken from the old machine, uh, indicates the average of 65 with a sample standard deviation of 10. A similar sample of 100 from the new machine has an average of 72, so the new machine is slightly higher. The question is, is it significantly higher? And a, stand, and a standard deviation of 9. At the 0.01 level of significance, determine is there evidence the purchasing manager should buy the new machine? That's the question. So that's that's so the first thing to recognize that you're dealing with chapter 10. There's two two samples going on here. First of all, it's not going to be 0.005. It's going to be 0.01. Jumping ahead to step number three, because the significance level is 0.01. But this is not the appropriate um, or the correct. Um, set up for the hypotheses because that proves that the two of them are the same or different, but now we have a direction higher. Now you can't possibly solve this problem unless you identify what the one and two stand for. Is one the old machine or is two the new machine or vice versa? It turns out it doesn't make a difference. You can call it anything you want, so let's call this the old machine. This is the new machine. Okay, that's it. So, so, what's, so now having that in mind, Remember, the H1 is the thing we're trying to prove. He wants to know, should, is there any evidence to buy the machine? Now, what, when are you going to buy the machine? If the new machine is what? Bigger or lower than the old machine? Bigger, OK? So if you can prove that mu2 has a bigger average than the old machine, it's a stronger machine or stronger produces stronger strength, stronger material. So what are, if this is greater than, remember, the H1 is the thing you're trying to prove. Is there evidence? Right away when you say the word, is there evidence, we're talking about the H1, because the A0 doesn't require evidence. The A0 is given the, the benefit of the doubt and is until proven guilty. But if the H1 is this way, what does the H0 have to be? What? It has to be greater than or equal. Remember, the equal sign always appears in the A0. Which is the op what's the opposite of less than, greater than or equal? So that's that's now we modified step number one. And I, I apologize a little bit. I really didn't mean to show you your first example, the slightly harder version. But when you do all the homeworks, you might as well be aware of this. Step number two, you plug all the numbers into the formula. So what are the numbers? They told us that the average of the now what is x bar one? Well, we just identified one to represent the old machine. Again, you got to be consistent. So x bar one is going to be. What do they say? This is 10.8. Uh, the average here is 65. So it'll be a 65 here. The other average was 72. The sample size was 100. Here's 100. The sample size of the other group was 100. So 100 goes here, and 100 goes all, all these places, 100. Now, it doesn't have to be the same number. It could be different numbers, but in this case, they're the same. And finally, the standard deviations were for the old machine was 10 and the new machine was, no, uh, was 9. So this will be 10 squared and, 10, and this will be 9 squared. Okay, remember squared is an important part of it. And also remember that one of the assumptions that we're making here, and you have to read the assumptions of the chapter because there are different, there are six or seven versions of the formula in the chapter. The, the, this particular formula is pooled, meaning that these two numbers are sort of averaged together, and you can only average things that are similar. You can't average apples and oranges. You've got to be similar. So this is 9, this is 10. So there are formulas to determine how similar they are, but just be aware of the fact that they have to be somewhat similar in order to use this formula. And secondly, this is called the independent T, because these two parts, the independent T, because these two parts these two type, these two samples of 100 and 100 had nothing to do with each other, as opposed to the situation where you might pick, for example, 100 couples, husband and wife, husband and wife, husband and wife. That would be called dependent. One depends upon the other. They match together. They're, they're paired together. That's called the paired t-test. This is the independent t-test. And we're using t here because the sample standard deviation is given to us. There's also a z version of the formula. But for the test, as far as I know, all you're responsible for is this single formula. At this point, anybody with the calculator can give me the answer. And I'd like you to please do that uh, right now. 
Uh, you know what? Let, let's, let's, let's finish this up. I'll put this aside for a second. I'm going to close off the tape in a second, and you'll do the calculation. Let's move on to step number three. Step number three, you've got to take the alpha, chop it in half, which is 0, 0, 005. So you're going to go to the 0, 0, 005T column. How many, what degree of freedom we have here? How much degrees of freedom? 100, what would you say, Laura? 198. Now, when you go to the back of the T-tail, what's the, what's the largest number, or the largest degree of freedom? I think it's 120, which means that you get anything past that point is basically the same as a Z-table, and it stops changing. And in fact, if you look it up, you're going to find uh, a number there that's going to be 2.57 something. Well, please look it up. Will you pass it back to Laura, please? Thank you. Anybody who cares to prepare for the test should be looking up the T-table. And it's 2.57 something. Yes, Laura. 5.8. And minus 2.5758. If you're doing this by the critical value method, remember this is called the critical value method. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Brian, is it still on? Yeah, critical value method. As opposed to the p-value method, which we'll do separately. Um, the p-value method, you, bet you, can't do, you can't calculate. You simply throw all the numbers into pH stat or something comparable, and the computer gives you a p-value, and then you take that p-value and you compare it to the, to the alpha of 0.01. That's the p-value method. But right now, we're just doing it by the, so to speak, the, I think, a simple method. So, and of course, if the number here is in between, we say that the two machines are the same, in which case you're not going to buy the new machine. And if this number here is, oh, I made a big, big mistake. What was my big mistake, folks? And I'm glad I made the mistake on video so people can see that I'm valuable. Yes? Right, because the whole sample is a one-tail test. The whole point is you don't chop the alpha in half. So I apologize for that. That's going to be 01. You don't chop it in half, which means these numbers are going to be wrong. So I'm gonna have to, and now we're going to make the picture only on one side. Only if one is much bigger than the other do we reject a zero. If it's smaller, we don't we leave it the same. So which side should it be now? The right side, of the, uh, Tony, or the left side? Well, remember the rule is you basically, you basically, you know, if it's pointing to the left, it's on the left. So, but you, I don't know, what did you say? We didn't pass it back to Tony. Okay, so the answer is the same rule we had in chapter nine. If it's pointing to the left, now think about it. If the x bar here. If this is much bigger than that, it's going to be a very negative number. So rejection will only happen on the very negative side. So the, the simple rule works in this way, way as well. So this is part of the accept region. And now we've got to go back to the table. Instead of looking up the point 0005, now we're looking up the point the one column. And that's going to be 2.33 or something like that. So it's minus 2.33. Laura, do you want to look it up again? Or anybody else can look it up? 32. Six two, six three. So it's minus two point three two three three. The the calculation after uh, the consensus is minus five point two. And I started saying that it's uh, if you would have called this the new and this the old, everything would have been flipped, including this. And so the, this would have been a positive five point two. But the conclusion would be the same. In this case, it comes out to be in the rejection region, and therefore the answer is literally on the arrow to say reject a zero. But if you say that, you're going to lose about a quarter of the points the problem is worth because the question was, should there, is there evidence that the purchasing manager buy the new machine? And you've got to say yes or no. You've got to interpret what's found. Would anybody have an opinion about that? Should you buy the new machine or not buy the new machine? Sit tight. Are you raising, you're shaking your head? Yeah, we just proved we rejected it. What did we do? We just rejected this. What does that prove? The new machine is bigger than the old machine. That's what the, that was the reason that they're going to buy the new machine. That was the, the criterion. So, so yes, buy. So buy the new machine. Very logical. And that's the end of that. <laughs>